notice, notice how emotions produce a physical reaction in our bodies. When we feel fear, we feel our body inhibit. When we feel in love, we feel our body expand. When we feel anger, we feel like fire inside of our body. And we feel like hitting, attacking, screaming. When we feel sad, we feel cold and need warmth. Every emotion we feel causes hormones to be produced in our body. And this hormone production changes the biochemical reaction in our body. So an emotion is an emotion. The nature of an emotion is to flow. Inside the word emotion, we have the word motion. That means movement. So from a very young age, I felt a particular passion for the world of emotions, for the complex world of, of our brain, for human behavior, for pain, suffering, and illness. I was always invaded by a thirst to learn, to find the logic in everything. Now, if we didn't learn from our parents, schools, teachers, society, how to express our emotions, we will struggle. We will have communication problems with others. If we can't manage our emotions, we will get sick. This was my case. From a holistic perspective, by not expressing our emotions, they block in our body. And our body expresses this blockage through illness. This was my case, okay? I would like to highlight that when very young children suffer from serious illnesses, the dynamics are much more complex than when adults get sick. We know that a child does not have the capacity to manage his, her emotions, especially young children from two years, three to 12 years old. When we observe young children suffering from illnesses, it is much more complex because in the child's emotional universe, the parents are the main actors. So the manifestation of illnesses in very young children is completely another subject to be explored in depth. So in my case, I had a benign tumor in my pituitary gland. This tumor was causing me to produce too much growth hormone. The doctors wanted to operate on me and I refused. I went through the periodontal disease, my teeth. I immediately say to myself, I want to know why my body is expressing this. That's when I discovered urine therapy. The intake of my urine took me even further. I used to ask myself if the illness is in me, maybe it is because I created somehow, but how, why, when, where? If my body is a living laboratory with a perfect mathematical divine intelligence, where is the answer? When I used to ask my mother complex questions when I was a child, she always told me, I am a Sita. <laughs> Don't dig too much. Because if you dig too much, you will find something. So I always did what she told me. It is the opposite. Come on. Don't stop me, dear. Let me spread my wings and fly. 
to find your own answers, you have to dig. You have to explore your deepest layers. It's not funny. It hurts sometimes, but it's worth. So my quest to know the origin of my physical ailments led me to be accompanied by a psychotherapist. I kept consuming my fresh urine. This psychotherapy led me to understand the root of my illnesses. I found the answers to my questions. Please note that I don't know everything. I'm still in the process and I love to be in the process, the process of discovering myself. In the meantime, my mother died of breast cancer. And I tell you, it took me almost 10 years to understand the language of diseases. Yes. Yes. Even if you are seriously ill, you have to know that is the manifestation of perfect mathematic in your body. This fascination for the perfection of the human body led me to complete my studies as a PCA therapist. PCA means person-centered accompaniment. And at the same time to become a bioresonance practitioner. So I work with a laptop size scanner called Biospect. The Biospect is a quantum scanner created in Russia. Through this scanner, we can see at an informational level where the person is vibrating. We can see graphically, so to speak, how their personal song sounds at a very deep level. If I go to the liver, for example, I go down layer by layer until I get to the DNA. I can reinform people by sending them specific frequencies that allow them at their own rhythm to rebalance themselves. These specific frequencies are divided in 25 families like homeopathy, Bach flowers, the chakras, emotions, gemology, spagyrics, etc. Biospect is an energetic rebalancing device since an organ is both a receiver and a transmitter of frequencies. It emits information according to its state. The more its condition deteriorates towards pathology, the more it devi deviates from the, its optimal frequencies. So the, when, when the biospec reinforms the body through optimal frequencies transmitted to the organ, it is able to reharmonize itself. The transmitted frequencies are painless and non-invasive. So I do this work in person and at a distance also. The biospec doesn't give medical diagnosis. The use of the biospec is not a therapy to cure diseases. I accompany people so that they can find coherence in what they feel think, say, and do. This allows the person to focus on him, herself, and therefore to be in alignment. In other words, hear his song sounds the way she, he wants it to. A new alignment reconnects people to their inner self and therefore they can flow. So again, from a holistic perspective, the human body is energy, information, vibration, and frequency. 
what makes the difference between people from each other is the information in which they vibrate. We could say that information is made up of what the person thinks, believes, feels, hears, does. What he eats, what she drinks, what she says, what he doesn't say, what he expresses, what he is silent about. All this information is present in our cells. So, when we feel a physical, emotional, or mental imbalance, it is an alert indication that the body's own intelligence expresses. These functions in our way of living, which must be understood in order to act upon them and reverse the harmful tendency. When we get sick, the body would indicate that we are not in alignment. There is no coherence in what we feel, think, say, and do. When we are sick, feeling, thinking, saying, and doing, vibrate in different information. And at that moment, we feel scattered, defragmented. Again, our song doesn't sound as we would like it to. All the musical notes are there, ready to form harmonious chords. It is up to each of us to make the necessary changes to concretize and refine harmony. Practicing urine therapy is the highest expression of self-love. The intake of my fresh urine, the psychotherapeutic accompaniment, deep breathing exercises, radical changes in my beliefs received from my parents, religion, teachers, and society, expressing my emotions, changes in my diet, especially in the knowledge of acid and alkaline foods, allowed me to regain balance in my health. Before I talk about my experience with age urine, because as many of you may have already noticed, I'm passionate about age urine, I would like to share with you a story that I like. Maria's favorite meal that her mother prepared was a delicious fish with coconut cream. Maria's eye would widen and her taste buds would activate every time her mother served her the delicious fish. But there was one detail in the fish that always made Maria wonder why. Her mother always served the dish cut in half. Maria always said, mm, but it would look nicer if the fish were whole. Its beauty would be more appreciated. So one day, Maria asked her mother, why do you always cut the fish in half before put it in the pan? The mother answered, I don't know, Maria. That's how your grandma taught me to prepare it. So Maria asked her grandma, why do you always cut the fish in half before putting it in the pan? The grandma answered, I don't know, Maria. That's how my, my mother taught me to prepare it. So Maria was lucky enough to still have her great grandma alive. So one day when she visited her, she asked her the same question. Why do you always cut the fish in half before putting it in the pan? The great grandma answered, ah, you mean the fish with coconut milk? Yes, said Maria. You see, Maria, in our times, there were only very small frying pans. 
So we always, always had to cut the fish in half to make it fit in it, in the frying pan. We didn't have big frying pans as you have today. I love this story. However, the beauty of the human being is that we are all different. Not all people would question whether the fish would look nice or whole on the plate. Many people would just eat the delicious fish without asking so many questions. Why they go? Why should they go any further? It is very difficult in general for human beings to detach themselves from their beliefs and behavioral patterns. Being permanently attached to beliefs in general secures the person. This is totally understandable and respectable. We have the example of John Armstrong, who stuck precisely to what he believed in, to his sacred text called the Bible. And it was precisely that passage in the Bible from my own point of view, according to his own intuitive interpretation that led him to experiment with drinking his urine. Sacred texts have left us beautiful teachings, but when you read them from your own intuition, they leave you messages that go beyond the text itself. Religion is not the same as a spirituality. By the way, it is not part of our education to know how to read. In our schools, for example, we are forced to read and repeat and repeat what is written on paper without the possibility of re-questioning what we have read, let alone re-questioning ourselves. And please don't take me wrong. When I say repeating and repeating, I mean a repetition that denigrates the self. The human being by nature is fascinated by the phenomenon of repeating, repeating, repeat, repeating mantras, for example, has an extraordinary power in our being. Likewise, the pleasure we feel when repeating songs, poems, tirelessly watching our favorite movie, etc. I'm referring to a repetition that inhibits, that imposes like a dictatorship, mutilating the essence of the being. Many times it could be said that beliefs would be the only reference people have. The person doesn't know any other reference. She, he has not experienced by him, herself, to go beyond. We still need to know our seven bodies, at least seven bodies. Do you know that we have two brains in our body? One in our head and the other in our digestive system? and both are intimately related. Do you know how your nervous system works? Do you know how the sympathetic and parasympathetic system works? Do you know what hormones your body produces when you are under stress? Have you experienced the spiritual side of your pineal gland? Do you recognize the voice of your own intuition and the unique language of your inner wisdom? No, we don't know. We haven't been taught how to experience by ourselves. We don't know our bodies our physical, emotional, mental, spiritual, schema beliefs, intuitive, 
and divine body. I have two examples that perfectly illustrate what I have mentioned before. I have a client who was going through a colon cancer. From the holistic perspective, particularly in the emotional body, colon cancer would be related to a painful event or shock which the person could not digest. It could be an unhealed grief, an event that causes a lot of anger and injustice. My client, she wanted to heal, but she didn't want to explore the incoherence in what she felt, thought, said, and did regarding her relationship with her mother. She told me that she hated her mother. She hated her deeply. She had her reasons and her reasons were valid. Her hatred was genuine. And that was okay, no judgment. Remember, an emotion is an emotion. The nature of an emotion is to flow, motion, movement. I asked her if she would be open to explore that motion because it was very strong. It was her emotion. She said, no. She hated her mother so much that she couldn't even mention her name. She died six months later. Please remember that we are all different and extremely complex. Each of us, we are not even like a world. We are like a universe, multiverse. What I have mentioned before is not to say that all cancer sufferers in general hate their mother. No. What is evident is that somewhere in the emotional body, there is a blockage. There is information that for many reasons cannot flow in such a way that the body in its infinite intelligence finds a mathematical solution and that is when the physical illness manifests itself. Again, please note, all this is based on from a totally holistic perspective. So my other client has major stomach problems. He's gluten intolerant with hemorrhoids, major inflammations at an intestinal level and overweight. At some point, he told me that he loves to eat in the middle of the night, but I mean eating big. He would prepare complex meals and start eating. This habit had started when he was a teenager. I asked him what pleasure it evoked in his body to do this. And he told me that when he was a teenager, one night, around one o'clock, he was studying in the kitchen. And his grandma, who lived with them and whom he loved deeply, came into the kitchen and they started talking. Grandma started cooking and they began to eat. It was a magical moment for him. From that moment on, it was the same thing every night. He was 15 years old when this habit took place. And today he's 60 years old. And he keeps eating around one o'clock in the middle of the night, every night. I asked him if he would be open to explore this in an emotional level. And he said, no. He didn't want to change this habit. He told me that eating late every night in this way 
allowed him to feel connected to his grandma, who has been dead for more than 15 years ago. Nowadays, my client suffers deeply with his inflammatory problems. It is important to note that we create anchors in our brain, deep anchors. In my client's case, his anchorage is eating very late at night, makes me feel hurt, loved by my grandma. I feel that I exist. Eating in the middle of the night allows me to keep the memory of my grandmother alive. Can you feel the deep subtlety of this? How deeply complex are often those anchors that we have created? No, it's not easy to get out of our comfort zones. Getting out of it implies knowing the roots of your own suffering, which would lead you to reconsider your beliefs, your schemes, your dynamics at all levels. And this is scary. So people decide to stay with what they know and what secures them. Sometimes not even urine therapy has positive results in people, not because its effectiveness is questioned, but because it would be necessary to explore all the subtle bodies in order to detect where there is information that is not in alignment or coherence, as mentioned before. Do you remember? Alignment and coherence in what I feel, what I think, say, and do. Our urine contains all the information that inhabits our being in every level. So that's why drinking your own urine is extremely powerful. So, to go back to our fish story, remember Mary? So just like Mary, I asked myself that question. With age urine, I asked myself, why if my age urine is extraordinary for my skin, and gives me this glow that no expensive cream on the market can give me. <laughs> Listen, I put my age urine on my skin, which is an organ of my body. Would it hurt me if I put it on another organ of my internal body? But, to explore this, I had to break down beliefs. First of all, my own beliefs based on wrong information regarding a curing. And then break down beliefs I have read in books about a curing. The information in the books warns you that the use of a curing has to be limited to external use only. So I based my explorative experience on the beautiful phrase that says, never put anything on your skin that you couldn't eat. And my skin was already eating my age urine. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I was excited, I tell you. But to be honest, there was a lot of reluctance in my being. This reluctance was based on lack of information and lack of, inform lack of information of my own experience, 
lack of information limits us. So I start to inform myself. I started to find out if there were people out there who consume already H urine, and I found many people. Among them, Harry Matadim, last week a speaker, Monica Schutz, that by the way, we have already sent her an invitation to be our speaker, so we hope he, she replies. But I began at the snail space. I would put three drops of my H urine under my tongue once a day for a week. The next week I proceed the same, but three times a day. The next week, I increase the dose to seven drops under my tongue once a day. The next week, the same thing, but three times a day. I respected the amount that was right for me. And I was in an observation mode, guys. So nowadays, I drink 150 millimeters every day of my age urine. I drink 50 millimeters three times a day on an empty stomach. I started doing, doing this six months ago, and I'm not dead. I will never forget the first day I dared to take my first day during. I made sure there was someone in the house in case I had to be rushed to the hospital. <laughs> I was so nervous. But when the urine, my H urine passed through my esophagus, it felt, it felt like I, it, I was burning inside. And when it reached my empty stomach, I felt every cell in my body explode in unison in a thousand colors. Like when you see fireworks in the sky, with the difference that it was an internal experience. I had the sensation of having been resurrected, to have been resurrected from, th from something that was left behind. I didn't know what was left behind, but what I did know that day was that I would never stop drinking my HUA. Then I was submerged by a great inner peace. It was like entering an inner silence when you realize that you vibrate with the all. You can call the you can call him God, life, everything. This sublime experience led me to go through the wonderful experience of choosing. Choosing in total freedom, choosing based on what I want to experience and not choosing based on what others have told me to do or not to do. So I let age my fresh urine for nine days. At five, it is okay, but at nine is better. I like to use the number nine because it represents nine months of gestation. I put my H urine on my face every day. When I get up and before I go to bed, I have two rituals with my H urine every day. Every day I drink my fresh urine. I drink my urine when I have my periods. Ladies. A urine with my period. Ladies, this is extremely powerful. Your periods, lots of stem cells, and we just throw it away. But there is something that you have to experience by yourself. It's wonderful. I also mix sometimes 50 millimeters of H urine with my fresh one. I massage my body with H urine. I put a cotton ball full of H urine in my navel. 
and I massage all over my stomach area and my genitals. Libido increases, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> you have to try that one. Go for it. In a no spray bottle, I hold my H urine and breathe it through my nostrils. This procedure is extremely beneficial when you have a headache. It takes away my headache immediately. It cuts my hiccups immediately also. So every day before going to bed, I leave my edge urine in my mouth for 10 minutes. The first day I did this, I got scared because I noticed how the inner skin, the skin of my mouth fell out. And I know Run It, I Run It, I don't know if you are there, but Run It said this in a post in our group also. However, this caused me no pain. And the next day, I did the same thing. I have noticed that this seems to be a depuration process in the mouth, powerful. Urine intake is very subtle. I don't know if you have uh, noticed, but our urine tastes different depending on our mood. I have noticed that if I get angry, for example, my urine will taste bitter. And conversely also, when I have episodes where I have a lot of laughing, pleasurable moments, my urine will taste deliciously appetizing to my mouth. One day I experienced something very interesting. I went swimming in the late afternoon. I said to myself, what would happen if my breaks, I drank my urine? I did. That night I had a very hard time falling asleep. Because when we do physical effort, we generate stimulating hormones like adrenaline and cortisol. But at the same time, I told myself that, it, that urine is an excellent substitute for coffee. By the way, the ingestion of my urine led me to stop drinking coffee. And I swear it that I loved to drink coffee, but I don't drink it anymore. Deep changes. Diseases are not an enemy. No, you are not consciously guilty of being sick. Your physical body, one of the seven bodies you are, your physical body is part of you. Your physical body in its infinite Mathematical intelligence creates illnesses. Remember, information is mathematic. Information in your cells. This information is based and created by what you think, what you believe, what you feel, what you eat what you drink, what you say, what you don't say, what you express, what you don't. And this wave information vibrates in a specific frequency. And all this together, using again the analogy of music, is your song. To recover health, we need to change the information vibrating in our cells. How we can do it differently? Using our internal and external tools, learning the functions of our seven bodies, expressing and managing my emotions, eating and drinking properly, knowing how to breathe properly, sleeping enough, relaxing, 
listening to my deepest needs, having a deep relationship with your inner wisdom and the divine part that inhabits you, learning to put limits to others, learning to say no to other people. That's very important, guys. Cultivating yourself by doing what you love, making the time to be creative, etc. I encourage people to see disease from another perspective, from a mathematically holistic perspective, looking at our, our diseases from this angle allow us to not consider them as our enemies, where at all costs we prepare our chemical arsenals to destroy them. By destroying disease this way, we destroy ourselves. You are pure mathematics at its best. You are full of perfect musical notes in your seven bodies. Your cells contain the perfect divine information to regenerate no matter what your condition is. Observe yourself, question yourself. Dare to explore unexplored path. When you allow what you feel, think, say, and do, be in a complete alignment and coherence, you create harmonious songs in your beautiful and unique jukebox. So thank you very much, guys, for your attention, for being there. Thank you, Basuma, for your invitation to be your speaker today. I feel so grateful with you. Thank you. Wonderful talk. Wonderful talk. Great recording yeah. start. Great. Thank you, Lisa. Very excellent uh, historical talk you did uh, today. Okay. So let's see. Recording our chat. in progress. If we have some questions or comments, please let me, uh, Virendra. Greetings, Virendra. Please let me. Please let, let the Shivam protocol for insomnia. Thanks. Yeah, as mentioned, as mentioned before, Virendra, we are very complex, extremely complex. So in the case of insomnia, we could say that there is some information, especially in the emotional body or your mental body. How could you explore those Thoughts, songs in, in your body, it's, it would seem that there is something that is bothering you, that, you, that there would be some stress somewhere. But this is very, very, very personal, you know? So as mentioned before, when we can detect what is, what is bothering me, where I feel this stress, do I feel stress in my relationship with my wife, with my husband? I'm struggling in work. Is tense? Something, something tense? Do I have communication problems with someone? I mean, it's extremely complex, extremely complex. So when we begin exploring this in such a, in this way, so there are changes because you are able to listen to yourself, to listen to your own needs, your own deep needs. And then you respect yourself and then you take decisions and you say, okay, now I have to change this. I have to change this dynamic with the communication or with my boss, with my wife or, or with someone. So it's very specific. But in the meantime, of course, I would suggest that you keep drinking your fresh urine as much as you can, especially before going to bed. 
because you know in 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 your first fresh urine especially the fresh first urine there are a lot of hormones melatonin there are hormones specific hormones that your body produces only at night that's why fresh urine is extremely powerful so i would suggest in the meantime that you explore your all other bodies you know your subtle bodies to keep drinking your fresh urine if you dare to to drink your 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 age urine in at the snail space as mentioned before go for it is very very powerful so i'll go i can yes yeah, Luisa, it's a very excellent presentation. I would like to ask you two questions. The age uh, the age of urine, what would be the measurement content at a time you can drink? 50 milli or 100 milli, what would be the maximum at a time? I mean, you know, this is very, when, when you begin with age urine, guys, this is very powerful, I tell you. Age urine, touch, touch very, your, your very deep, subtle bodies. And with, with age urine especially, you will see that you can, you can trust, you can trust your intuitive body. This is as you feel, as you feel. And your own body will tell you, your own body will guide you, your own body will indicate you the perfect dose that you need. Hey guys, could you kindly please mute micro? Someone has a micro on? Please, please mute, please mute. Yeah. So this is very subtle with age urine, you know? So I would say there is not, there is not that maximum dose because it's, we are all different. So I know people, for example, Monica Schutz, she drinks a lot of age urine during the day, maybe one liter a day, but everyone is different. So for me in this moment, 150 millimeters is just perfect. And I don't know if I'm going to increase the dose. I don't know, but I tell you, I just listen to myself and I trust my body and yeah, and, and sometimes, you know, uh, I don't drink uh, 150 millimeters, but I have also my age urine here, you know, like homeopathic way. So I, I always keep this in my purse. So wherever, whenever, wherever I go, so I just put some drops under my tongue. I don't force myself. It's so wonderful, guys. It's, it's like... Uh, experiencing by yourself is kind of, you you can you can write uh, you can write uh, several books about your own experience so i encourage you to observe yourself to to begin just you know like one drop only one drop a day during a week or during a month it doesn't matter because it would be it would be your your choice, and this is the most beautiful thing, your choice. Okay. Yeah, other question also, one, someone can drink someone else's urine, especially opposite sex. Female urine, male can drink, or male urine, female can drink. Is it any harmful situation or any benefit? Yeah, okay. So listen, I haven't experienced that. I have just read about this and what I have read, people suggest that uh, if you can avoid, so to speak, to drink um, a female urine, that would be great. But on the other hand, I have also read that especially with couples, you know, couples, they are very, I mean, they are together. And in couples, that, that there would be an exception, you know, when, when one of the, of the person is, is very sick. We have read also that, that, that couples, they drink, they exchange their urine, especially when they have problems to, to, to having babies. 
and, and that it works because it's really powerful, you know? So for answer your question, I would say that this is something that you have to experience by yourself. I don't think it would be harmful, but I don't have experience on that. But uh, yeah, let's go for it and let's experience. Thank you, thank you, ma'am. What kind of, um, yeah, Basuma, how you came to know about uh, Shivambu? Yeah, when I was sick, when I, when I mentioned before that I had my diseases problems, I just, as, as mentioned before, I, I love to explore, I love to read. So yeah, searching, searching um, alternative, uh, alternative ways, non-invasive alternative ways to, to, to get rid of my, of my illnesses because that's what, what I, uh, when, when we feel that, when we are sick, we just want to get rid of it because we think that, that diseases are our enemies. And of course we feel bad. We don't want to be sick. So I just start to inform myself and, and searching, searching. Um, and actually, um, I went uh, to, with um, Dr. Tal Schaller. Dr. Tal Schaller is one of the best, best men in, in the world with uh, experience with, with urine. And I went to visit, to visit him. I, I, I took an appointment with him. And I tell you, I was shocked because I went to, to this um, appointment and he said, okay, tell me what is not going on in your life. And I say, what are you talking about? Everything is fine with my life. You know, because of course I was blind, so to speak. Uh, I didn't understand anything about emotions and and all of this stuff. So then he explained me that the way he worked was from inside to outside. And then he, he gave me his, uh, one of his books about Amaroli, but I didn't read it. For me, it was disgusting. So I said, he's nuts. No, this is not possible. But then, you know, my explorative way, my explorative way, I said, why not? Let's give it a chance. So I began reading, exploring, and that's how I discovered Shivambu. Basuma, what kind of utensil, uh, glasses, bottles, and other items you use for your Shivambu activities? Yeah. So um, I prefer to use, of course, glass bottles, you know, my famous one. This is two years old. I mean, this is two years old, guys. But of course, I consume this daily. So what I, what I do, how I proceed, is that I keep aging always, age urine. So as soon as I have enough age urine, so I just mix it. So in that way, my two years age urine mix with the new one, so to speak. So that one is my, my favorite one. That one that I showed you before, this is with my period, ladies. <laughs> so powerful. Hello, Hello ma'am. Can I ask you the question? Yes. So you have showed us the two years aged urine and that you kept in the glass bottle. Unfortunately, I am having more than three years old urine, but unfortunately, it is in the plastic bottles. Can this be again used for my health as you are using it? And uh, is there anything to be changed with the, the, these plastic bottles and convert it and put in the glass bottles? And will it help me? Yeah. Yeah, Mr. Chavan. Yeah, sure. I read your, your answer like two weeks before in the group. And, and of course, you know, it's sometimes it's not easy to keep our fresh urine in big, bot in, I mean, in big glass bottles. It's not possible. 
we 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 cannot okay. find them. So we find, I mean, what we have. If we have plastic bottles, so we just keep our urine there. But you know, the the mm -hmm. urine is so powerful. I mean, for me, shivambu is the highest expression of uh, life's love, of if you can call call it God's love. It's like, man, I love you as you are. It's, it's like, for me, it's always with, with these questions about uh, plastic bottles. I say, I love you as you are. It's like, I tell you, okay, sorry, but I, don't, I cannot accept you because you eat this. I cannot accept you because you drink that. I cannot accept you or love you because you are using a, you are using a, a plastic bottle with your shivambu. Yes. So yes, of course you can. Of course you can. So if you want to okay. use these urine in your in your plastic bottles, I would suggest that that you take out like a liter, some or two liters, and you put it in a glass okay. bottle. You see, put it in a glass okay. bottle. Okay. Put a cotton a cotton cloth mm -hmm. on the top with a with a um, with a rubber with a rubber. And then keep it, breathe it, breathe okay. it. Let it, let it, let it breathe okay. it do, during nine days, during a month, and then try it by yourself. But you know, little by little. But of course you can. Of course you okay. can. Yes, you can. Okay, thank you, thank you, ma'am, thank you. Because I am, I, I am using it for my fertilizer. But as the last time or last. Um, um, Speaker said that we are using aged urine. Then I thought, yes, I have got nearly 60 liters of it, and I should use it for human health purpose. But I was worried that yeah, it has been stored in the plastic. It may have changed certain uh, items in it. But it is so dark now. It is dark coffee color urine. As well, as you get a golden color urine fresh. But mm -hmm. this urine in my bottle is so very dark, like a um, black color, more or less. Yeah. So, so that's you, okay. Just, just keep, I would suggest okay? to keep it in 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 glass bottle, and then then you just observe how it goes. But okay. Go for okay. It. I'm, I'm a man of experiment. I will go in to do it with myself first, okay. and if I find it very helpful, then I will talk to the people. Thank you. You're welcome, Mr. Chavan. Yeah, Miss Louis said that there is problem for the face. They got akin, black spot, long, long lasting. What is the suggestion to the urine for the face akin, a face black spot symbols, and skin disease on the face? Yeah. Yeah, for that, again, again, for this kind of diseases, you know, because, you know, especially with the skin, Okay, I would say, of course, as many people, put your AH urine on your, on your skin. That's very powerful. But especially with the skin problems, diseases, issues, I would suggest to go further. Explore a little bit how your liver is working, you know. And, and of course, again, of course, again, explore and go deep, deep, in the emotional side also, what is bothering you, what's going on, when it began to disturb you. But I would, I would suggest to, to, to go deeper to explore another layers regarding skin uh, diseases. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, and about injections, I read someone here asking about uh, injections. I have, I have never tried injections. Uh, I came to do it. So yeah, why not? If I, if I, put, in it, progress. Uh, if I put it uh, under my tongue, you know, it goes uh, straight to the blood. Injection, injections is the same thing. I have, I have never tried, but uh, why not? Uh, uh, hello, uh, Lusaji. Uh, myself, Dr. P.V. Deshmukh. From uh, Nasik Maharashtra, uh, yeah. I have given a lot of injections to many volunteers. Uh, one of them is uh, Mr. Kaka, KK, KK Chavan. 
uh, will tell you about uh, his experience about adrenaline injection nice jawan ji in your bology ah mr chavan mr chavan yes i i i have taken many injection you did not tell us that go ahead tell us share with us i have taken injection intramuscular as well as um, subcutaneous also and during this pandemic also we have taken injection to protect ourselves as uh, you have told that we are putting the three drops five drops below our tongue that sublingual is also useful and i yes i have taken many injection i have advised many people to take injection and they are definitely fine i i okay. find it and this pratap so that's wonderful is unique, this pratap rao deshmukh is unique person with us he is a mbbs and he is a government doctor and he is still a member of our shivambo chikitsa mandal in nasik he is heading the mandal now and under his guidance we are propagating this therapy unfortunately today we see lot of patient coming in the hospitals we want to tell them that there is a substitute for your present treatment here through shivambo atoyan therapy that is what we are exploring now let us see how we explain to the people if some of them get benefit it it will help us that is what our program is dr deshmukh and one mr dusani who was also a speaker last time he has already established another anand kunj in nashik district but we are feeling a shortage of the expert uh, workers particularly massagist and people giving the enemas and that sort of thing because people have a nauseating feeling against the urine that even in the natural uh, uh, kendras people do the um, massaging but they want to use oils if we talk to them use urine they just reluctant they say that we are not going to use urine that is the unfortunate situation with urine actually we can train our people but it is difficult to get such a person who can massage the body finely and that is the problem with us but what how we we talk to the people that urine is urine is not that bad it is helpful that is the greatest hindrance that people have the, in their mind against the urine okay wonderful thank you very, wonderful thank, thank you, you very much for sharing thank you i have here a really important question va balas varalashmi sorry my pronunciation i have had my root canal teeth extracted two days ago and there are stitches too can i rinse with shivambu while having stitches there is no pain but swelling it is still there definitely yes especially using age urine i tell you i i struggle for years for years with my teeth you know and and um, especially age urine is so wonderful for teeth so i okay. would i would say just go for it yes especially age urine it's it, it's amazing it's amazing okay. and uh, okay. another prem prem sign any one of our members have checked all urine in laboratory that is a, a nice question i haven't do it so far i would like it and i will i will do it definitely because this is something that i, I i'm having in, on my head but i don't know if anyone in the group have already sent um, his her own uh, h urine to the laboratory guys someone or not hello ma'am yes tell tell us mr chavan how, how can we measure the ph of the old urine is there a simple yeah. system yes yes there are there are you know the little uh, actually i have in my bedroom so i'm going just to to take the the bands to check it and as i have here my h urine we will we will put it inside so you can see so i'm i'm just going to to go but here there is a question a very interesting question how to forgive someone fully completely like your parents who abused you physically and emotionally when you were very mm -hmm. small so that question is really important guys because of course 
for that for that question, I would say in that case, I would suggest you have to search for help with a psychotherapist. Definitely, someone has to be with you because these kind of experiences they are very harmful in our in our bodies. So you have to be re you have to go really really deep inside of your emotional body, your mental body, your physical body. And for this kind, specifically for this kind of issues, I would uh, suggest, uh, strongly suggest to look for some therapist to accompany you. So you can heal this with someone that has experience, um, that has a professional experience in this kind of, of issues. But this is really, really, important because um, of course uh, it is not about to 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 forgive you know it's you you have to go beyond of that you have to go beyond because normally especially with our parents mm -hmm. you know our religions our society they have taught us that it's kind mm -hmm. like our parents they are untouchable so sometimes it's like, okay, I can accept everything of my parents, even if my parent abuses me, because he's my parent. So it's like, uh, it's like, I cannot touch him. I cannot touch her. So this is not true, you know, but it's, it's not evident. So for that specific kind of issues, I would suggest you look for someone, for someone to, to help you. So guys, I'm going to, to take my band for the pH, so I come right away. Okay, okay. Okay, Luisa, I have one question. Okay. Anil, don't go, please, I'll show you the band. We'll show you how much pH is going to be. We'll take a break. Yeah, Luisa, okay, guys, I'm here. Welcome so, back. Oh, you see question. here, here I have it here. You can find it in the pharmacy. This okay. kind of, you see, you can find it in the pharmacy. All the pharmacies okay. have this. And these you have several colors and the, each color indicates you the acidity of the alkaline, uh, uh, alkaline or acidity in, in, your, in, in your urine. You see? Okay. So, here I have my age urine. So you just put a little bit like this. Then you take this one like this. So if you see the colors here, the purple one, okay. the purple one is 7.4 and the yellow one is 5.2. Okay. So this is the strongest. Okay. Okay. So you see it's completely purple. Seven point four. Okay, then it is it alkaline. Yes, exactly. Okay. Two years old age urine. Okay, so someone want, wanted to ask something. It was a lady. Please tell me. Yeah, Luisa, I have a question. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What, what is you, your opinion for AIDS patient to store the urine? Is it or not? Patients, patients with, with, with AIDS? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I mean it's it's like like any other other diseases. I mean with uh, with with urine. Eight patient, eight patient. I don't. Eight, I can... eight patient, eight patient. HIV. Aged. HIV. 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 Eight patient. I don't get it. Please write it down in the chat. I can't get it. Basically, she 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 is telling AIDS. It's best patient. Acquired immune deficiency syndrome patient. Yeah. What what about your opinion? 
She's telling about HIV AIDS patient. A AIDS. A I D S. ഇമോഷണൽ സൈഡ് and with the with urine also because as mentioned before urine has all the information that is in the other bodies so there is there is a specific information uh, with this kind of of patients uh, specific information in their emotional body so we are all different but we need to explore and go in depth with this kind of uh, of ailments but urine but urine is very powerful on this one of the patient from usa he is uh, having chronic gonorrhea he is suffering from chronic gonorrhea uh, he is under my guidance he is taking my uh, treatment uh, for from shumbu itself i am telling uh, right time uh, protocols right type of protocols for shumbu and he is improving day by day and he is doing shimu fasting since last uh, 17 days mm -hmm. and uh, he is almost 95% pain has gone away and from the from most of the parts the pain has gone away 100% mm -hmm. so the slight pain has slight pain remained at the back otherwise he is now all right so uh, aids patient hiv patients or gonorrhea patients can be treated with shimu definitely ah, okay thank you for uh, for uh... for your participation on this there is a, a interesting question here emdr therapy can help with trauma so guys i don't know if what if you know what emdr therapy is that this is a, i don't have the exact name but uh, it works you have a spe specifically movements in your eyes so you go like this you know with the, with the help of a therapist Um, so the the the, 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 the therapist uh, guides you with an object or something and then you just go moving your eyes like this and uh, it uh, it has a power, powerful effects especially on traumas uh, issues but yeah definitely it works yes of course it works but as uh, as i always say it is very important also to add to this kind of of issues to be accompanied by someone so the per, the person can express herself himself about the trauma you know because guys when we say the things when when we name them is extremely powerful because if we have a if we had a trauma in our lives it's like it was so powerful it was like a shock in our emotional body in our mental body and especially with uh, with our emotional body we just uh, we just stay like uh, i have no idea what to do with this with this because it was so strong for our body and then we just kept it inside because we don't express it for for example the the, the question before can you imagine to be abused by your by your parents this is so powerful is how can i who with whom can i talk with this if my attachment figure in this case my parents i mean they are supposed to love me and to respect me so if i go to someone to tell they are going to believe me no they are going to say that i'm a liar so you know is very subtle so of course the the uh, emrd yes yes definitely it works but at the same times it is really important to be accompanied with by someone where you can express yourself and you you won't be judged by this person so there are a lot of professional people out there who can be with you you know i mean in your country in your language especially talking in your language is very very 
very important to say that happened to me. And when you listen to the therapies that, that tells you, I believe you, how do you feel about that? So that is, that's powerful, of course, to answer that question. Thank you very much for that question. Hello, Madam, I am Ajay Rindalandar from Kerala. Can yeah, I say? Hi. Okay, your one hour talk, stylish, stylish presentation is highly commendable. Also, I appreciate your holistic mm -hmm. approach to this Shivambu. I have two uh, doubts. One, while talking, you said urine carry wide information to the whole body. Two, uh, could you further say the connectivity with the music and the maths and the Shivambu? Okay. Did you hear my questions? Yeah, so so if I, uh, I think that I just got the that. first one, that why did, did I say that? that information to the whole body. That the, 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 the information in our body, how urine keeps the information of our body? Yeah, okay, could you further say a few about it? That's, that's what you're asking? Are you while telling while, while telling you told told us that uh, urine carry wide information to the whole body. Yes, I want to get the uh, full information about the, the word you expressed. Yeah. Okay. So I express this based on the fact that we are water. You know, like uh, more than seven okay. seventy percent of water, and you know that water. Water keeps information, keeps information of okay. uh, when water. I don't know if you have heard about a Japanese doctor that studied. Yes, he was Mamari. passionate. Mamari. He was passionate about water, so he made a lot of experiments with with okay. um, with, with with water, with with glass water inside water inside water only water. So okay. he write down, he wrote down phrases and a stuck it on the bottle because he wanted to observe. So on the bottles, he had several bottles and in one bottle, he wrote down, I hate you. And uh, one detail, inside the, bo the bottle, there was water and it was rice also. That was an detail, important detail. So in what bottle he wrote down here and he stuck it, I hate you. Mm. In another okay. bottle, he wrote down, I love you. And another bottle, he wrote, thank you. And he left the bottles somewhere on a table. And when time passed by, he came back to observe what had happened inside the bottle, spe specifically in the rice. And when, when, when he saw the, the rice, when the bottle said, I hate you, the rice was black, completely black. So he took, he took a, a little bit of this water and got to the microscope and he analyzed this water and there was no structure on this. And at the same time, he took samples of the water of the other bottles and there was beautiful structure, um, like, a, like a snowflakes, perfect structure, it's like a snowflakes, you know? So he did studies about this for 15 years. You can find a lot of information about him. I don't remember now his name, but he was from Japan. So this is based, this is one of the experiments that, that, that he did. And this is based on, the, on, the, on that, that we are water. So, so water is, is, is a perfect liquid where the information keeps the information. So that's the reason why I mentioned before that this information in all levels is present in our cells. And that's why our urine has all this information. And again, from another perspective, 
from another perspective, from the biospect perspective that I mentioned, the bioresonance, you can see in the scanner where the, per the person is vibrating. There is a specific information. When, when, when you go to the emotional part, <clears throat> suddenly you see that uh, there is fear, fear, um, there is sadness, something like that. And then uh, you ask the person, yeah, do you think that, uh, that there is something in, that, that is bothering you, that, that you are fear something about something? And the person says, yes, actually, yes. Uh, uh, I'm going to have an exam next week, you know? So it's information, it's information, information vibrating in, in your cells. So that's the reason why I mentioned um, before that urine has all this information. Okay. And, pers and personally, personally, I have I have experienced it as mentioned before. If my emotional mood, the taste is different. I encourage you guys to test this on you. Just try it. With, with, in in one moment you are laughing, you are you are watching a, a, a stupid movie uh, that makes you laugh. Go go and drink your urine. You will see it's delicious. And if you get mad one day with your wife or your husband, ah, go and drink your urine. You will see, taste it. It tastes different. Very good information. I want to know further the connectivity of music with the mathematics and the Shivambu. Yeah, when I, when I mentioned music, you see, it was just like an analogy. It's just, it's, it's, I, I, I only used the analogy of music that we are like music, but at the same time, I have not experienced in, in, in me or my clients, but I know the impact, the positive impact that music, specifically certain music has a power, power is powerful in our being, in our beings. Have you seen the 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 the, the bowls? The how do you call when you when you you go with a stick and and you just hit it like this and it goes. So again, it's frequencies, vibration, is music. So it's like you vibrate with this with the with with the music with this kind of sounds. And, 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 and especially also with a spe a specific frequencies uh, with music, it has an impact also in our bodies. But in this case, when I was talking in my speech, I was making the analogy that, uh, that we are music, we are like music, like a jukebox, our body that has many, many songs inside. You know, and our songs, they are our emotions, the, the, um, the experience we have lived, etc. So I don't know if I answered your question. Okay, okay, yeah. Very good information. Thanks, madam. You're welcome. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank you, um, Mr. Tiwari. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, it was Dr. Masura Emoto, the Japanese doctor I was talking about. He was a scientist who found the Samsung water structure. Yeah, he said that human consciousness has an effect on the molecular structure, an effect on the yeah, structure of water. Also, he found water could save events of around it into water memory. Yeah, exactly. Thank you very much, Mr. Mr. Tiwari. Dr. Masuru Emoto was the Japanese guy that I was talking uh, uh, about. Thank you very much. Thank you. Should urine users go for Recording vaccination? Stopped. Should urine users go for vaccination for various diseases like, like COVID? So listen guys, this is, this is a question that is very personal. Is very personal. They, uh, I think that this uh, it has to be really 
a personal choice. You know what I mean? So in this case, I wouldn't say yes, go for it or no, don't go for it. Because I think it is a, it's a personal choice. I think that uh, we all know, we, I mean, we, our group, or we people interested in Shibambu universe, we know all the powerful that has Shibambu in our lives, in our lives. But um, uh, I cannot tell you, no, don't do it. Or yes, you have to do it. You know, because it's, it's, it's a personal choice. It's a personal, it's a personal choice. Um, me, per personally, you know, I didn't want to have this shot, but I had to do it. It's like I was forced to do it because at that time I had to fly to, to, to my country, to Guatemala. So it was kind of, oh boy, okay. You know, so it was tough. It, it was tough for me, but uh, I mean, it was kind of uh, like uh, like an emergency. I could say like that. So I had to do it. I didn't want it personally, but I had to. You know, but I have noticed that uh, when drinking my shivambu, it has a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful impact in uh, in my life. Even when I when I was shot with the, with this uh, vaccine, but to to answer your question, I think it is a personal choice, guys. Yeah, again, Rahid Gupta, it will take urine like homeopathic tincture way. It will work only when one take how many times and how many drops. So again. Uh, again, I would say this is um, this is a personal choice. I mean, this is like you have to feel yourself. You have you 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 listen to your own body, and I tell you, when you trust, when you trust your body, there is not another way. I mean, your own body will indicate you the right amount of drops that you need, or if you really really uh, have doubts about this. You can consult an homo homeopathy practitioner also so he, she can guide you, you know, but in this case, personally, I just listen to myself when I use my homeopathy um, shivambu drops. Hi, I have a question. Yes. So is it a myth about, you know, if you get stung by a jellyfish to pee on it? Is that a myth? And I have you know, a couple of questions. And the other one is I typed it in saying that if you have skin tag, can you actually put urine or age urine on the skin tag, would they fall off? Listen, I have not experienced uh, on this, so I couldn't answer your question because I haven't experienced by myself. But I know that if you, if you search um, more deeply, I'm sure you can find the, the, the answer to, to your question, but, but I cannot answer you because I hadn't experienced by myself or I, 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 hadn't know, uh, I, I don't know someone who has, ex, who has uh, experienced uh, uh, this. And the same of the, what was the first question? The, the, um, your first question, what was it? And um, if there is like a skin, almost like a skin Y mole that needs to be removed, mm -hmm. um, can can you just dip a cotton ball on an age urine mm -hmm. and put it in this in the skin, almost like the extra skin mole, and yeah. um, put a band aid on it, like a poultice? Yes. Do you yeah. think that would help fall off or it will shrink it? Definitely, I think I would encourage you to to try it. But all for these skin, uh, skin uh, issues, uh, I always um, propose to people that you really have to, you know, you know, to be on the observation mode. I mean, it's like you are a scientist. You are literally a scientist, guys, when you are experienced with the urine, especially with H urine. It's like you have your own laboratory. 
And having your own laboratory means that you, you, you keep notes, you write down, you observe. And for these issues, for the skin, it's the same thing. So, so somewhere you can write down when you began with the process, and then you observe. So you observe in a week the changes you notice on your skin. And for me, the most important thing is to be consistent, consistent, perseverant. It's not like, okay, I'll try it, and you just try one a week, and then you just you just don't try it anymore. No. Remember that the body needs time, guys. The body needs time. It needs time for for very um, for 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 um, healthy issues. For example, kind of cancers or something like this that they, that they're not simple things. You have to be very very patient. It takes three months. It's like a cycles, you know. So the first three months, the, the, the body is in a process of depuration, and then the other three months, regeneration, and above all, we are all different. So this is to say that we really need to be really patient with ourselves, with our bodies, because our body it takes time. Our bodies, they are our body is not in a rush, guys. It's not like, okay, just go, go away from me immediately. I don't want it anymore. So that's why we have observed people that come to our group asking questions and they are very desperate and saying, please, I need I immediately, I need answers. No, unfortunately, it's not like that. Unfortunately and fortunately, because it takes time, guys. But it's worth, I tell you, it's worth. And especially the beautiful sensation that you will have when your process is finished. You will feel so powerful in this because it was your own experience. And you just feel like, like glowing and because you had the choice to do it. But I mean, patient, patient is is one of the most important factors on this kind of, uh, of, uh, of experiment. Thank you. And, and so when you put it on the skin and let it dry, you don't rinse it off, put it, put it in skin, let it dry. And the, it, it shouldn't smell, right? Because once it's dry, it doesn't smell. Yeah, so you know, that depends. I would say that it depends. Um, I personally, when I put it on my skin, I, I don't wash it after, afterwards. But I mean, I wait. I mean, I am in, in my room. So I wake up at the three o'clock in the, in, the, in, the, in the morning. So I just put it and I just leave it like that. So when I wake up, I mean, the, the smell is, is gone, you know. But of course, we are all different. We have activities. Sometimes we have to go out. We have to meet people, etc. Et so then, of course, you can put it. You can leave it as long as you can. That would be the best thing. And then, you, of course, you can wash it only with water. Of course, not using um, avoid to using uh, soap. But the, the smell is gone. Thank you. You're welcome. Hello. OK, OK. Very good. Can I take one minute of audience? I have a, I have a patient who is having Hello? so much hungry. Early morning, one o'clock. Hello? Who's hungry? <laughs> who said who was hungry? One o'clock, one o'clock, one a.m., one a.m. It is, it is not controlling. Sorry, I can't hear you. Can you repeat your question? I, I only heard that, that you were hungry. What time you were hungry? Voracious hungry. Uncontrollable. He's telling midnight, a 1 a.m. He's feeling very hungry. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, of course. So again, so again, that would be interesting again, again, guys, 
to explore, to explore in your emotional body, in your mental body, what brings you to, to be in this, in this mood of, of having, of being hungry, you know? It's like there, there, is, a, there is no satisfaction, I would say. So you need to put all the time something in you so um, based on my experience with, um, with uh, my clients, I would say to observe yourself, of course, because we are all different. Would you have certain, certain problems to put limits, for example, limits to others, limits to yourself? Um, and again, another interesting um, point would be to observe or to have some laboratory analysis to see if you have parasites in you, you know, because our the parasites we have in the in the in the intestines, they love to eat. They love to eat, and especially sugar and fatty things, you know. So I mean, there are several aspects to take into account in all your bodies. You know that, and, and I would suggest you explore this uh, with uh, with a therapist. I mean, with uh, with um, with a homeopathy therapist, um, um, uh, yeah, an, alter- an alternative therapist to just to check out. You know, in the in the if there there would be parasites in your um, in your intestines, and and or, and again the emotional thing also. Um, because it's, ne- it's, it's not enough, never, never is enough. It's like, it's like the, the food just go, uh, just go through and there is not satisfaction, you know? So it's like, it's like uh, there is no limits. It's like, you know, a river, when the river just goes like this, but it would, it, it would be like, there are no limits for, for the river. So the river just go like this. So that would be something like that. So I would suggest to, to check how you can put limits so you can so that, that your river can can flow in a structured way, you know what I mean? But again, as all we are different, it's something that that you need to explore. And another thing, and another thing is that drinking your own urine is something so wonderful. Because when you drink your own urine during the day, during the day, I mean, when you get up and you drink your fresh urine and you keep drinking your urine, you, you, you follow a specific protocols for this. And I know that there are so many people in our group that they have a lot of protocols and you stick to these protocols. You will see that you will not be hungry so much because your urine, again, in its own infinite intelligence, has something that you don't feel hungry anymore. And this is so powerful that touch every level, every body in, in, in your being, in your seven bodies, you know? So how to make little changes step by step, day by day, and, or, and above all, to observe yourself, you know, again, you are like a scientist. So it's like, okay, okay, man, I have this problem. I I recognize it. Okay, what's going on? Observe yourself. So I would suggest also that you write down, what did you, what did you eat every day? What time? What was, you know, in the, what was the, the situation that you were living that led you to go for a cookie, for example, maybe you were under stress. What is causing stress on your being? Maybe you had a, a strong dis- discussion with someone. You know that when we are sad, that we are sad, we feel like uh, to eat something sweet. Have you noticed that? A little bit of chocolate or something? Because again, hormones, guys, hormones, hormones in our body. And it's like, I can, I, I can help myself. I can't. So then you go for it. You go for your chocolate. You, you go for your cake. 
you go for your for your cookie what you go for your soda especially if it has a lot of sugar you know sugar why because you feel sad because you need love so again we are extremely complex we are extremely complex but when when we recognize that there is an issue in us then there are a lot of changes that we that we experience because we want to change and that's the most important thing there are people that don't recognize that there is an issue on them and then don't then don't give even a little step to go further because there is not interesting because again remember when i say it's not easy to get out of our comfort zones yeah Thank you. You're welcome. Hello, ma'am. Yes. This is for our general viewers here. There is very disturbing news in the paper. By 2025 in India, 10% population will be suffering from various types of cancers. This is a disturbing news. and uh, we, we urine therapist have to give some suggestion for this type of dangerous situation to arrive in future in this country can shivambu therapy will help us in combating this danger in future unfortunately in anandakunj there are many uh, patients particularly ladies patients they are mostly suffering from uh, various types of cancers and getting relief out of the treatment and the, dr nitin patil is uh, posting many success stories and there is a majority of them are the ladies unfortunately with this dreaded disease of cancer so all of us have to brainstorm our brain and find out the ways and means can we do something regarding this future danger this is for general information here thank you ma'am we have here thank you ms heard you for nearly 2 hours you have tremendous capacity very nice information you have provided us and we are indebted with your um, so good, nice and valuable instruction given to us i think somebody has to uh, we have already crossed the time limit we have i think a daily mondays meeting two hours time we have already exceeded it i hope let us conclude it yes. and somebody to thank you to our today's speaker please yeah of course yeah i'm just going i i just want to to answer a, a question delphine uh, ask how to loop but still find sleep at night and not to go toilet not to go toilet every 15 minutes so so delphine i have experienced something really interesting one uh, once i experienced this and one night i uh, i drank my age urine before going to bed i drank uh, this 15 ml and i didn't go Uh, to the toilet during the night and i was just so amazed with that because you know i i go to the bathroom i mean two times maybe two times or three times but sometimes it's really uncomfortable but i don't know why or what but something balanced i mean aching balanced something inside me i didn't go out i didn't go uh, uh, go to the to to the toilet Thank so, you so much. So I I, I experienced this mm-hmm. I mean um every night so I I kept this experience like two weeks without stopping to you know to just verify and it was like that so then I stopped so I said okay tonight I'm not going to drink it so I just want to observe myself mm-hmm. and and yeah I went to the to the bathroom but I don't know there is something inside I don't know I hormones or something in the kidneys you know 
but really there is something there is something and okay. just to finish to finish uh, with uh, um, what um, uh, mr Ch uh, chaban uh, has mentioned before i think guys that that um, there is still a lot of information that needs to go out from our mouth so we really need to to pass this message to pass this message to people especially um, patients with uh, with cancer there are a lot of mis uh, misinformation and again as i mentioned before we don't know how our our bodies work we don't know so guys for example i uh, when i when i was young i was so afraid to getting cancer i don't want to have cancer in my life i said to myself it was like a like having cancer was like a coincidence or that maybe God sent me this cancer. So there are a lot of misinformation. There is no information how our body works. And when we don't have information, we are lost. We are completely lost. We don't know how, the, how cancer works. Why cancer? Why? We don't know ourselves, how it works, how they work. So when we know our body, then we understand. And then we can see diseases again from another perspective. So because there is this guilty in people. Oh, maybe I am a bad person. Maybe I mean the information that that makes you crazy, guys. So I think if we can do something, there is information, clear information about our bodies and support to these people. So uh, I encourage and I invite people with no matter what kind of disease you have, cancer or whatever you have, there is no coincidence on this. I mean, you are not alone. There are people here in the group that, that we love to share our experience, but above all, we are here, we can listen to you because you are not alone. So I encourage people to see diseases from completely another perspective. So thank you guys.